If you followed stock car racing in the 1990s, that meant watching some of the sport's brightest stars in their heyday. Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, and the rise of two more future Hall of Famers, Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett, later in the decade. NASCAR's 90s star power featured two other bright lights whose careers were tragically cut short, Davey Allison and Alan Kowicki, both in aviation accidents barely 10 weeks apart in 1993. But there's a third superstar in the making whose potential was never fully realized, all because of an accident that nearly ended his life and altered the course of NASCAR history. Into those final corners now. Here they come for the finish. Here's your winner to the strike. What if a single incident shifted the paradigm that was NASCAR in the 1990s? What if Ernie Irvin didn't hit the wall at Michigan in 1994? I'll tell you what, Larry McReynolds gave me a chassis that just wouldn't quit. It seemed to outrun everybody down the straightaway so good. Would Ernie Irvin be in NASCAR's Hall of Fame? Would he have 30 or 40 wins and multiple championships? Let's dive in, but first, let's rewind. Davey Allison was coming off a hotly contested championship battle, eventually finishing behind Kowicki in 1992. Out of turn four, Davey Allison will win it. In 93, the young superstar from Alabama compiled one win, led numerous laps, and held a top five points position for much of the season. That all came to a screeching halt with the tragic helicopter crash. The Robert Yates team set out the next race until they figured out how to proceed without their driver. Two months later, the team lured seven-time winner Ernie Irvin away from his number four to become the full-time wheelman in the 28. A big win for Ernie Irvin, his first victory with this team. Well, I tell you, it's pretty emotional. The whole time I kept thinking, you know, Davey never made it to Victory Lane here. I've been wearing his shirt since I started driving his car. I knew we could do it. This is for Davey. Irvin was fast as soon as he climbed in the car. He piloted the 28 for the final nine races in 1993, earning two poles, two wins, and leading almost 900 laps. With Robert Yates' legendary horsepower, the success continued the following season. Ernie Irvin staying up in front in the final moments of this race is coming down to win. Irvin won two of the first four races in 1994 and vaulted to the points lead, a position he'd swapped with Dale Earnhardt well into the summer. He had three wins and five poles in the first 20 races, but his title campaign would come to a catastrophic, premature end. This morning at 8.40 a.m., 35-year-old Ernie Irvin hit the wall in turn two. In August 1994, Irvin crashed during practice at Michigan. His Ford Thunderbird hit the turn two wall nearly head on, and Irvin suffered critical injuries, a broken skull and collapsed lungs. Dr. John Mano arrived on scene with the rescue personnel and performed an emergency tracheotomy inside the car. Ernie was then airlifted to a hospital in Ann Arbor where he was given a 10% chance to live. This devastating crash pulled Irvin from his race car, and now instead of fighting for a championship, he was fighting for his life. Hey, Ernie, man. About time you get up and get on back down here and try to race me some, man. We're having some fun here. We're missing you. We sure do miss you down here and wish you were back with us, and we know it's going to be a speedy recovery for you. Irvin would recover, but the rehab was long and exhausting. He would race again, getting back behind the wheel 14 months later but he would never rekindle that past success on the racetrack. What if Irvin's fateful practice session had gone flawlessly? What would be different? Irvin had been Dale Earnhardt's closest challenger in that season's title chase, but his absence allowed the Intimidator to pull away for a record-tying seventh cup championship. Earnhardt holds him off to win the race and knock down his seventh Winston Cup championship. I reckon I have to give Ernie credit some too, Ernie. Ernie worked off a hard for what he had and was having a good time racing him. Had Irvin denied Earnhardt that year, he never would have reached the same title-winning heights as Richard Petty and Jimmy Johnson. And the champions who dominated the late 1990s, Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte, would they have been crowned as easily? And would their win totals remain the same? Does Gordon get to 93 career victories, which placed him firmly third on NASCAR's all-time wins list? And what about Irvin's case for the NASCAR Hall of Fame? A Cup Series championship would have virtually guaranteed his entry into the Hall. As it stands now, his 15 career wins make him only a fringe candidate for induction. The ripple effect on Irvin's injuries also sent shockwaves through the NASCAR driver roster. 
Dale Jarrett left Joe Gibbs Racing to take over at Robert Yates Racing. His arrival in 1995 began a 12-season partnership that produced one championship, two Daytona 500 titles, and 29 of his 32 career wins. Dale Jarrett is going to pull it off at Daytona, his second Daytona 500 win. Does that relationship happen without Irvin's misfortune? Jarrett was set to start his own team in late 1994 with Hooters sponsorship until Robert Yates called. Maybe DJ drives for himself. Or what if Jarrett never leaves JGR? Does Bobby Labonte get his shot with coach Joe Gibbs relatively new number 18 team? Labonte was still trying to find his footing in the Cup Series when he landed as Jarrett's replacement. Once he did, 21 wins and a championship followed. Does Joe Gibbs Racing grow into the heavyweight organization that it is today without him? Does Labonte's career take the same path ending in the Hall of Fame after his retirement? Jarrett's fate made him one of the most successful drivers to ever drive a Robert Yates Ford, but had Irvin's career trajectory stayed on course, would Yates have hired the same drivers as either his teammates or replacements? Yates lured Kenny Irwin Jr. from the sprint car ranks in 1998. Later, Yates brought in veteran Ricky Rudd, who became the last driver to win with the iconic number 28 in 2002. Ricky Rudd and the Haviland Taurus win the Dodge St. Mark 350. Make no mistake, Ernie Irvin made a lasting impression during one of Stark Car Racing's most dynamic eras. But thumbing back through the history books and finding Irvin's contributions, you have to wonder, what if Ernie Irvin hadn't crashed during practice at Michigan in 1994? We will never fully know what Irvin's legacy could have been, because what we do know is what actually happened.